And this is session one of Waterdeep Dragon Heist. Yay! <laughs> Sweet. Just hoping it doesn't drag on. <laughs> Only one tonight, I promise. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, that's what the bard's for. Uh, so, anyway, um... <clears throat> This is not your typical adventure. It's uh, different in a lot of ways, of which you'll soon find out. Um, the main thing to note is that the majority of this adventure does take place in Waterdeep. And Waterdeep is a place uh, that has a strong law and order. And I'm going to share a copy of the code legal with you, but, uh, you know, overall, if you're lucky, you're going to pay a fine and do some hard labor. You might even be flogged. Uh, you can be exiled for certain things. You can be executed for other things. So, you might really want to think twice before you do any action that someone might see you do. My companions look disreputable. I'm going to turn them in. <laughs> I was really tempted to name my guy after the shadow. From the old 30s radio show and uh, Alec Baldwin's character from the shadow. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> but I couldn't. Even, I didn't want to look it up, so I just went my normal name. Lamont Cranston. Yeah. So uh, once again, uh, you might want to be careful what you do if there are going to be witnesses around. <laughs> and for. Um, the purposes of this adventure, uh, we are going to assume that you all know one another, if that's all right with everyone. Fine with me. And uh, we'll uh, start with Anna, and she can describe her, her character and what she looks like and whatnot. Okay, well, uh, my character is a tiefling, or tiefling, however that's pronounced, um, and she looks like a demon. Uh, red skin, horns, wings, and she is a bard. Uh, her background is uh, she's a criminal, so um, she's... Uh, you know, she grew up on the streets, and she's kind of a thief. Um, so, I guess that's about it. Okay, Mr. Harry Toe, would you like to go next? Oh, uh, sure. Harry Toe is a uh, strong heart halfling, uh, born and raised in uh, Waterdeep. From the Southern Ward, he uh, lived with his father, or still does on occasion. His father is still working there and uh, peddling many goods that are acquired. Um, there's a few guards that uh, may have committed his face to memory down on uh, Chowney Street, but uh, the rest of the Splendid City has yet to know his name, and that is what he intends to do. Okay, bro. Okay. All right, Bry is a halfling. He is originally from Trade Meat in Ulm. He, um, like many halflings, you know, lots of curiosity. Um, he was being fascinated with an itinerant traveler, philosopher, and self-described liver of life by the name of Lukben Erskender. Um, and when he moved on, Bri went with him uh, to learn his ways. Um, so yeah, he, he's basically a monk. Um, 
who has recently arrived in Waterdeep looking for uh, his latest experiences. Yeah, cool. And last but not least, we have Damon. My name's Damon Grimm. I'm a half elf. My talents lay more in the arcane, but inherit it, unfortunately. And my, my father is, was an elf. Who, they say it's a family blessing. I say it was a curse. We all have innate magic in our blood. When saying we gave it from got a king from years ago, I prefer to think it was a mad king because we wanted to make a deal, a supposed celestial for power. And uh, I got a uh, black hair. My skin's kind of pale. My eyes right now is pure white. But if you ever seen the shadow, and you guys have seen in the shadow of darkness, as we know, as my eyes go red. And I got another couple of quirks when I'm casting my spells. You know, as the area around me starts to get a little gloomy and dark. Otherwise, that I'm an okay guy. Occasionally crazy. That's it. Okay, and as I previously said, uh, this adventure uh, takes place in the town of Waterdeep, and we're going to do the very cliche start of beginning in the Yawning Portal. I don't know if the Yawning Portal is kind of cliche. <laughs> uh, you're starting in a bar. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be sitting in the shadows. And I bet I did not shrink that map down. <laughs> I hope you like the map. It was 395 on DM Skilled. <laughs> it's a nice map. Cool. Oh, it's all wood. I think it's a bad idea that one of my main spells is... Uh, absolutely. And let me... Yeah, let me. Ourselves. <laughs> and I'm going to share another image with you. That was included in the book. Uh... Well, I think we just found Bra's favorite place. But they did a uh, nice little uh, <laughs> graphic in the book that contained uh, several characters from the Forgotten Realms, Critical Role, Matt Mercer's in there, and whatnot. Oh yeah, I forgot they added him in. Actually, didn't he help write some of them? Uh, yeah, he uh, helped flesh out some of the characters and whatnot. It's a cool image. And uh, you're going to notice uh, <clears throat> that there's this big black hole in the middle of the map. Um, the Yawning Portal, uh, Doran, the barkeep. Um, this is a hole that leads down to the Under Mountain and a lot of uh, forgotten caverns and temples and dungeons and God knows what else is down there. But he, when exploring in his younger days, uh, collected some treasure, come up and built the yawning portal on top of it and he charges adventurers uh, gold in order to uh, drop down into uh, the portal to seek their own for fame and fortune interesting and you know it's not uh, it's not an uncommon occurrence that, you know, something from down below might try to uh, c 
come up so you know it's a lucrative little business for him but you all arrive at the yawning portal and uh, fortunately you're able to find a table by the door I didn't put tokens on the map just because they're a pain in the ass but the place is uh, really packed with patrons Okay. And, you know, people are drinking and dancing and having fun and, you know, the typical uh, Friday night bar scene. I'll be sitting there just chatting up with people who walk by and just having a little bit of water and some food. Fortunately for me, out of character, I'm going to say alcohol and innate magic ability to mix. I wonder who's going to go down the pit next. <laughs> and uh, The portal itself is a uh, stone building. It's got a slate roof with uh, several chimneys. Um, the 40-foot uh, the diameter open well is actually the outer shell of some sunken stone tower. And it descends into the first level of the under mountain. And, um, you know, the, the bar itself is, uh, it, it's a nice comforting little bar. Uh, it does contain, uh, rooms on the upper floor, uh, nice comfortable uh, decorated rooms, um, you know, you can get food and drink and lodging there. Okay. And as okay. you're all sitting down, uh, Durin, the barkeep, comes over to you and says, hey mates, how are you all? Fine old chap, how are you doing this fine day? Ah, uh, he says, that, uh, you know, I'm doing fine. Uh, what can I get you all this fine evening? I'll just take some water and uh, some fine food, mate. Ale. Lots of it. Yeah, ale sounds good. And for the lady? I'll take it uh, three L's and a water and some food coming right up. And, you know, he um, walks back behind the bar and he goes through a set of doors and disappears for a minute and you can hear him uh, shouting orders. And, you know, you're taking in the crowd, and like I said, it is uh, quite a busy evening at the Yawning Portal. There's all types of folks about. And, you know, you can hear uh, uh, people eating and drinking. You can hear uh, the sounds of... Um, gamblers and you know there's adventures singing songs and um as you sit there taking it all in waiting on your food uh you hear someone shout ya pig like killing me mates does ya and you see the seven foot tall half orc that gets hit by the swinging punch from a male human whose shaved head is covered with these eye-shaped tattoos. And four other, uh, four other humans stand behind him, ready to jump into the fray. And, you know, the half-orc stretches and she cracks her knuckles and roars and she leaps at the tattooed figure. Uh, but before you can see if any blood's drawn or anything else, um, a crowd of spectators cluster around the bar 
around the brawl blocking your view and if you scroll out on your map a little bit all that is happening in the northwest corner So by those stairs. Oh, 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 I'm going over to check it out. I gotta go see this. Yeah, what are you doing, Anna? I'll go over there too. So what was this? You said you're killing my. Uh, you like killing my mates, do you? And the human, or the half orc, uh, Yarga is the one that uh, yelled it out. And once again, it's a busy night at the portal. So uh, truly, it's, it's going to take you two or three actual combat rounds in order to get over to the fight. Okay. By, the, by the time you worm your way through the spectators and so forth. You want us to uh, go back where we were and work our way over? I uh, no, you're fine. Just as long as you know, took a couple of rounds to get there, and so is it a, a whole group of guys on one person. Uh, yes, uh, they are on a half orc. And yeah. let me turn a token module on. And uh, the K, by the time you get over there, uh, you can see that Yarga is, uh, she's actually on the floor. I look over and see what Dern's doing. Well, if he's even visible. And you can tell that she is, um, pretty well wounded and Krentz is uh, up on top of her and he is just pummeling her. Uh, the other four guards uh, aren't assisting in the battle but they're keeping the crowd back. And you know uh, Doran's yelling you know he comes out of the kitchen area yelling what the hell is going on. And there's no fighting in my bar, damn it. And, you know, he starts to head that way. So she's looking pretty beat up. Is that he pulled any weapons or is he just consistent? Uh, yeah, he's uh, just using his fist. I look at uh, Cass since he's pretty much closer to me. Uh, look at him, what should we do? Um, Harry Toe's going to slip in between the figures and over next to where she's laying down on the ground and whisper in her ear, Fight back! <laughs> so he, he just kind of stealthily ducks between them, maybe between one of their legs, and goes over to uh, get real close up close to the half work and see what she uh, yeah, you know, she's she's doing her best to, uh, you know, avoid being hit, and, you know, like I said, she is, uh, pretty well wounded. What do these guys look like? Do they look like they're, like, guards, or the, uh, just, uh, seedy? You know, I'm right next to her now, right? Yeah, I know. We know each other, so I know you're seedy. Uh, let's see what it is in 5e. Okay, I guess knowledge local could be history. 
Yeah, uh, history would be it. Yeah, uh, if you want, uh, let's make a history roll. Not that I have anything to it. And, yes, uh, you can tell uh, just by their clothing and the tattoos that, you know, they're uh, members of the Xanathar Guild, one of the local <laughs> crime guilds. Uh, Xanathar is technically not a licensed legal guild, but that doesn't mean that... Um, you know, he doesn't operate as such. Okay. Well... Okay. Well, Byron, seeing that Harry Toe is more like instigating the system, Cicero, and she's looking pretty beat up. And you got Doran working his way over, screaming, Break it up or I'll bust your heads. I'll cast Dancing Lights and just put him hovering around uh, Kurtz's head. Just say, come on, gentlemen, she's she's had enough. How about you? Trying to be, I don't know, persuasive, I guess, or intimidating. I don't know how to, what's going to be. Uh, break it up. She's had enough. We can get this done with. We don't we don't need to stir and kick everyone out because you guys pissed him off. So, do you want to be intimidating or persuasive? I'm gonna try persuasive. It's intimidating. I'm, I'm more when it comes dark. Although the ground area would have went dark around me when I cast a spell. But I'm trying to be persuasive. Meanwhile, Harry Toe's getting eyeball to eyeball with the guy that's on top of her. And he just has like four dancing lights rolling around his head just to... uh, you know he's not so much uh, persuaded by your words as he takes a second because he's distracted from the dancing lights right, right. Harry Toe tells him get off or I'm going to bite your nose off pick on someone your own size Uh, do you want to try an intimidation roll on that one, Harry Toe? Oh, sure. But, but it's, he's not he's, hes not faking. He's really going to try to bite his nose off. <laughs> okay. So, where Uh, with that, you know, he, he looks at you and he can see the seriousness in your eyes. And, you know, he just kind of, he's on top of her and, you know, he's beating the half-orc. And uh, he just kind of throws her back down on the ground. She's had enough anyway. And he starts to get up. Okay. And he stands up and, you know, by this time, uh... Duran has made his way over to it, and, you know, he... He's not shy at all. He walks over and he grabs Kurtz and he twists his ear and says, Get the hell out of my bar. Don't come back till you sober up. And he starts leading him by the ear. And, you know, the Xanathar Guild members, uh, they just uh, follow in suit. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Oh, do they leave any empty full drinks on the or any drinks on the table that are half drink? Uh, yes, I'm sure you can uh, find a couple. Oh yeah, I'm gonna go and I grab one and start filling it up with the others, and I'm getting a free. Did any of us break a person who can actually heal? Uh. 
no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll go help Yerga to stand up if she if she offer a hand help her stand up. So she's still... Uh, yeah, and uh, while you're helping her stand up and, you know, you get her seated at her table, Doran's uh, finishing throwing these thugs out the front door. And, uh... I'll ask her, what's, what was that all about, lady? My name, oh, first of all, my name is Damon. Okay. I'm, I can't really help you with your wound situation, but I hope everything's okay. Uh, she's like, uh, you know. Uh, it, it, it's just a work dispute. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I I I appreciate your help, I I really do, and uh, I I'm gonna go back and uh find someone to uh give me some healing. Okay. Well, stay safe. She's like, uh, I am going to sit here for a little while and uh, wait for um, You're wait, welcome to join us at our table. Uh, I, I, I appreciate it. Uh, I don't want to intrude. Uh, uh, I'm going to give those guys just a little bit of time and uh, you know, to get out to get away from here and uh I'm gonna finish my my beer. Where did my beer go? And she's looking she's around the tabletop. <laughs> Harry belches. <laughs> uh, well I guess I'll have to order another one and uh, you know, she yells across the bar, Doran, to bring her a beer. I'll offer to pay for it, since my my comrade drank hers while she... And... <clears throat> it's, you know, I, I, I appreciate that kind, sir. It really wasn't necessary. I can't pay for my own beer, but... Nonetheless, a free beer is a good beer. Make it two. I want one too. I am not buying one for you. You just drank a table of work with other people. And from the uh, far side of the uh, bar room there, uh, you can hear shouts of alarm. And you can see this hulking creature climbing up out of the shaft into the middle of the room. And it's a monster with warty green skin, a tangled nest of wiry black hair, a long carrot-shaped nose, and bloodshot eyes. It bears its yellow teeth, and you can see that a half dozen bat-like creatures are attached to its body. And... There's three more circling around the air. Everyone in the tavern reacts in fear, except for Doran, the barkeep. And he shouts, Troll! Okay. Gentlemen, there is more soon to be abandoned beer to consume. <laughs> Oh, I'll unload one at the first flying thing. And, and you do see, uh, according to the description, they were flying around him. But you do see uh, three Sturges that are flying up around them. And nice little blood-sucking creatures. Okay. I remember those things. And then, of course, you got the nice-looking troll. <laughs> oh, I 
I remember this from my uh, son Lucida. And uh, you know what I'm about to say. So let's roll for initiative. Oh, wow. So that's my good roll for that. So you said there was a couple more Sturges flying around, or just those two? Uh, he has several that are attached to his body, uh -huh. but only three that are flying around that are currently threatening. You mean like they're hanging on him, or he, they're sucking his blood, or what? Sacrifice to a shark. Uh, yeah, they they are hanging on him. Um, they're not sucking his blood, but they're roosting on him. <laughs> so okay, so he carries them around, and then they go and kill stuff for him. Uh, yeah, uh, you know how sharks have those other little sharks that swim around, swim around and, around and yeah, got it. Okay, well, I'll let. I'll let a firebolt fly at the first one we come across. And I'm going to lock tokens. Wow, I go first? Oh, you go. That's my turn. I am shocked. All right. Uh, Duran is going to make a dash behind the bar. And You can see that he reaches up and grabs a uh, a great sword. Ooh. And Harry Toe, you're up. Harry Toe will make his way to there first. You know, he kind of jogs over there. Is there anybody at this table and anything left on it? Uh, I'm sorry. You were asking if there's anybody at that table? Yeah. He's moving to by this table. So far, that's 30. Uh, yeah, but, uh, people are moving away from the hole and not toward it, so you're but able is to... Is there any full drinks on the table? <laughs> uh, yeah, you, you, uh, not full, but you can see, uh, several half-emptied. He grabs one of the, the half-full mugs, um, and then takes that with him and continues on... Okay, uh, the first Sturge is, uh, flying over to one of the tables and attacking the patrons there. Uh, Sturge 2 and 3 are doing the same thing. And I need to on MPC set a couple options for next time. And Bry, you're up. He will double move. And
Anna? Okay, um, I will, uh, I'll use my crossbow for the first attack. And I'll try to hit the troll. Since I missed, I'll uh, just put the crossbow down. Okay, and you can take a move if you'd like. Is there any good cover here? Like maybe one of the tables or something? Uh, you got that post uh, immediately to your right. You could hide behind. Yeah, I'll just go right there. And Yargo's not in the battle. The troll is going to finish climbing out of the pit. And he immediately just starts wreaking havoc, trying to attack uh, the crowd that's trying to flee from him. Okay. I'll move down a bit. I'll let go another fireball that the one I already did before. You see me cast and do my arcane mumble jumble is there. It gets dark and gloom around me. Wow. A whopping one. <laughs> but a hit. Uh. And Doran, having the great sword, jumps up on top of the bar and kind of rolls off of it. And does this dash action to get close to the first Sturge. Um, Harry's uh, drinking as he goes. And uh, walks right underneath this table. Uh, being only three foot high, he just kind of ducks his head and walks underneath the table. And uh, still looking out towards where the uh, the Sturges appear to be. Watching intently as he drinks back uh, the remainder of the ale that he took off the other previous. And Sturge number one... Uh sees uh, Durin coming actually toward him while everyone else is fleeing and he tries to attack and he does manage to hit and you can see that Durin takes some damage and Sturge number two is just moving over trying to attack whoever he can and three is circling around the table, chasing one of the people that were at it. All right, probably will move to there. And then he is going to hurl a dirt at the stir. <laughs> All right, Anna. Um... 
I guess I'll try to get closer to it. What's our maximum? <clears throat> what's my maximum movement? Is it 60 if I run? Yeah, if you double move, it would be 60 if you move and start. Okay. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. Okay, the dash action takes you around. And the troll's still just moving around, wreaking havoc. Target the troll, and you'll see me reach into my little cops of house with all a small diamond, start focusing on it, it starts going uh, all real random colors, the area's getting dark around me from my, my sorcerer's thing, and then it all of a sudden glows for uh, bright orange as I unleash a chromatic orb of fire. And of course, I miss. The one time I use a spell slot, I miss. <laughs> okay, uh... Wow, okay. And... Doran is gonna swing his, uh, great sword. <laughs> and with that he's gonna run down closer toward the troll Harry Toe Harry Toe uh, uh, you know uh, pops out from the table right there and uh he is going to, uh, you know, as having finished his drink, he is going to uh, pull his bow out and attempt to shoot the, uh, the winged creature across the way. Okay. Targeting doesn't work. It should. Huh. Is, it dead? Can... is that why? Oh, the one that's right in front of you is dead. Oh, that one's dead? Okay. Yeah, that's then, why it's got a Harry red skull. Huh? And he will step up on the seat and then stand on top of this table and shoot his bow at the troll. I thought you were talking about the other Sturge way down that way. I was going to take care of the close one there. Good hit. Jeez, and the bonus is more than the two damage I did. Sturge number three is just continuing to create havoc. Bry, you're up. Alright, Bry will continue moving towards Troll. And as he moves, he'll try to throw a dart at him. And you did? Right in the eye hole. The big troll eye hole.
And Anna, you're up. What are you doing besides moving down? Um, actually, I'm trying to decide which spell to use. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Like that's that's my my turn. I'm oh, okay. oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I, I thought you. Okay, and the troll becomes aware of uh, you know people shooting at him, so he's going to come over and Bry hit him with the dart. And he's going to come up and he's going to swing a claw at you. Oh, shit. And that's it for him. <laughs> No cold bolts to save us now. Okay, I'm gonna just go to try and true, try hitting him with a fire. Yeah. Okay. I mumble under my breath as I just yell him. Someone may want to. You got anyone here who can heal? Get cast back up. And Doran's going to do a uh, dash to get around. Harry Toe's going to put another arrow in the troll. And he misses. With that, he jumps to the floor jumps in the other chair and moves up to the other Dan Sturge 3 is just flying around chasing patrons Uh, Darius, would you like to make your own dust saving throw, sir? <laughs> huh, it says I've already failed, too. Uh, yeah, we can clear them out. That's why I was asking, it did an auto roll and you had a critical fail. <laughs> ah, gotcha. 
uh, halflings get to re-roll their ones. Failure. Dying one. Okay, Anna, you got yeah, one you member of your party you just saw drop. drop. Yeah, I, um, I've got, uh, I can, I'm gonna cast Fairy Fire on the troll. I'm gonna set this whole place on fire. Oh, okay. well, Fairy Fire doesn't do that. That's good still. No, I mean, it's our next test. What, what happens in campaign one? We burn down the yawning port. <laughs> Run to the fireplace, grab the fire logs, boys. I think it has to make a saving throw when you cast that, right? Uh. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not sure how to cast a spell in this. I, uh, I've never done it before. Uh, there's a. Okay. Yeah. I think it's like a it's got a sword. Icon next to it, is that it? Uh, you see the. Uh, uh, you see the uh, yeah, you can uh, drag the cast over and drop it on the troll. Okay. And it automatically failed its saving throw, so now you can. Uh, you can drag the effect over to the troll. And then under your spell slots, if you will click off one of your first level spell slots. I'm assuming she arranged that so only hit the troll and not cask or a dirt. Yeah. This is not like a 10 foot square or something like that. Uh. Let's see, Fairy Fire is a 20 foot cube. Oh, it, okay, I didn't realize that. Maybe I shouldn't cast it since. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you were to cast it like right there. Okay, see, I, I didn't even see that cube when I, when I put the spell there. Uh, I just uh, drew I it. Just <laughs> okay, I see. Um, so, I, can I change my my action? Can I cast um, Dissonant Whispers instead? Well, Fairy Fire is an awesome thing. Uh, because everyone who hits it with an attack can pass. Okay, so is it okay to uh, just go with Fairy Fire then? Am I not going to hurt anybody? Yeah, you're, you're, you're good. good. You're good. Okay, great. Okay, and then the troll. Yeah, Yarga, he would have seen you casting the spell. But he's gonna come down because Doran's yelling and screaming at him and rolling a. brandishing a big weapon. And the troll tries to uh, take a bite, and he yells in anger and swings by two claws at him. And only one of them hits. And... Bry, um, uh, a patron, uh, comes right up running out of the corner and
steals all your stuff. Uh, they kind of run over to you and they they pour uh, this liquid from a vial in your into your mouth, and you regain seven hit points. Mm -hmm. That was an interesting experience. And Damon, you're up. Yeah, I'm just gonna unload another fireball about it. Wow, holy shit. I can't even hit with an advantage. Yeah, I'll move down a bit. <laughs> wow. Okay. And Doran is uh, kind of pissed off that there's a troll in his bar. And he's just chopping away with that uh, great sword. got to be a fighter. Okay, Harry Toe. Harry advances back to the center of the other tail, jumps up on it, and is going to let another arrow fly. Are you going to move me? Or? Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know why it was rolling twice. It's because you got advantage. Fairy fire gives advantage on all attack. Oh, I didn't know she did that. I thought she didn't. Okay. And Sturge 3 is still just chasing bar patrons. Right, Bri will stagger back to his feet with his move action. And you'll throw another of the darts at the troll. All right, Anna, it's your time to shine. Okay, um, let's see. Hmm. I guess I'll attack it with my, uh, my sword this time. That was a good attempt. <laughs> yeah. And since you missed, uh, the troll is not really aware of you. And, you know, he tries to bite Durham and does hit. He's going to try two claw attacks. And they both miss. Okay, give me a second here. Now I'll just do Firebolt. Well, we're unloading Contation, and 
A little fire bolt comes out of the dark. Ooh, yeah. I give myself a little, little fist. And Durham is uh, swinging away. I'll take the critical. And the troll's looking fairly beat up right now. And Sturge 3 is just chasing whoever he can. Alright. Rye. Moves up to the troll. to pummel it with his staff. Well, tries to. Alright, I'm gonna try casting um, Dissonant Whispers this time. And he failed his saving throw, so you can drag the damage icon over and drop it on the troll. Okay, uh, you mean the effect, or is there another? Yeah, because that does something. That does something, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I read it. Uh, that, yeah. Uh, it uh, right underneath the cast button, you got the little red blood drop. Oh, okay, I see. Doesn't it, like fear that too or something like that? Yeah, it has quite a few effects actually. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Yeah, it makes a wisdom saving throw. And must immediately make must immediately use its reaction if available to move as far away from you so he would I'm not sure if that's one of the abilities that actually trigger a reaction. Uh, yeah, it says on a failed save. 36 psychic damage and must immediately use its reaction to move. Well, no, not you. I mean, for other people to hit it. I, I know there's one of them, but I don't think it's that one. Good, let's people take it. It's next action. Uh, I know for him it's making him move, I'm just saying. I know there's one spell that allows people to take attack of opportunities against a creature when it's running, but I don't think that... No, because he's not willing, willingly moving away from him. Yeah, that doesn't apply in 5 there's actually one or two spells that allows, like, allows attack of opportunities when that happens, but I don't think it's this one. Yeah, it doesn't say anything at all about it. And was it, um, I don't know if you know, Anna, you also have a ability you could do as a bonus action, too. Oh, yeah? Um, what's, what's that? 
You can do uh, Bard of Inspirations. That would okay. give uh, uh, any part, any member in your party. I think at your level's a D6. You can do that. Your charisma modifier a day. Okay. Um, you don't have to, you do don't it. have to do it. Yeah, well, I I would want to. I mean, uh, yeah, it's because it'd be so like the same song. You say song. Yeah, my charisma is 17, eight. so that would be what would be the modifier? Plus five? I can do it five times a day? No, that's no, plus three. Plus three. Hmm? Sorry. Plus three. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, so, so right now, oh, three times a day, uh -huh. you can pick you can one person or party and give them inspiration. Okay. And they'll get the roll of D6 on all their attacks, saves, and I think skill checks. Cool. I should have I should have done that before then. Well, you're newer to 5e, so I'm, you're not expected to know everything. Every right, yeah. And that's a bonus action, so that's kind of like a swift action in Pathfinder. Okay. That's a feat, right? No, it's a bard ability. And it's called Bard of Inspirations. They get it at level one. I'm trying to figure out which uh, Rob Tui effects coding it would be in. <laughs> it's not really one being one. You just tell a person, you give them a D6, and they just need to remember they can roll a D6. Yeah, uh, that'll work. And... That's it for Anna. The troll. Discordant whispers is applied just to that. So it's gonna step back over toward Doran. And we're going to try our bite. Then he's going to try two claw attacks, which only one of them hit. And Damon, you're up. Okay, I'm gonna fire firebolt at the troll. Hmm, advantage has gone off it already? I thought that lasted 10 rounds. Oh well. Oh wait, I'm gonna move a bit. And there we go. Now scrolling back to see when it expired. Oh wait. Is distant whippers a concentration spell? I think fairy fire. Oh, those only last as long as I'm concentrating on them? Well no, I don't know if oh, it is no, a concentration. It doesn't say it's concentration. No, it sure doesn't. And I don't know if Fairy Fire is either. And... Yeah, Fairy Fire is a concentration up to one minute. Yeah, Fairy Fire is. But Destiny Whisper didn't cancel it. So. Okay, there's where she applied it.
So they might as well just cancel each other out or something? No, no, no. If you had concentration spells, well, because you're only allowed to concentrate on one spell at a time. Uh, so just but uh, just some whippers, not concentration. Okay. Does the troll regeneration get rid of it, maybe? Come on, dude. Uh, I don't see where it dropped. So I tell you what, we're. I'll just put it back on the troll. You want to try your attack again so you got advantage there, D? Okay, okay, you want me to just roll damage? Ah, uh, yes, please. It was weird to drop because it said exactly 10. Did Anna take any damage? Because I know it's got the C in it. If she takes any damage, it would roll the save. Uh, no damage. And Durham's up. Uh, and, you know, he hits the troll and the troll, uh, Falls to the ground and he doesn't stop. He uh, you little things that a perch on come flying off. Yeah, you know he's just taking that great sword and just hacking and slashing and doing all the damage and. Uh, eventually, uh, you know, he stops whacking the troll, and he's, uh, convinced that it's dead, you know, just for final measures. He grabs his greatsword by both hands, and he plunges it right smack dab in the middle of the troll's chest, and wiggles it from side to side for good measure. You need to burn it. I'm sorry. Uh, he needs to burn it. Yeah, it won't, it'll regenerate if we don't use fire. I hit him with a firebolt twice. Uh, yeah, the uh, regen's off of him. Oh, I thought, uh... I thought you had to, like, totally burn it up before it would stop. Well, I would've just kept on casting firebolt while I had to burn it. Because I'm pretty sure it's not that hard to miss something that's dead. <laughs> no, I probably would. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Uh, with your rolls, uh, anything is possible. And uh, Doram looks around, and he's like, "It's a typical night at the Yawning Portal, isn't it, folks?" And I'll I'll start pursuing the other Sturges there. Yeah, but we still got one flying. And with that being said, uh, Harry Toe, you're up. I'm up. I thought the combat's over. No. No, we still got one creature up. I will take the long, ultra long shot with my bow. Where's it at? There it is. Oh, yeah, I can feel I'm in a hit. It's only 140 feet. Am I at disadvantage? What's the range on your weapon? I am. So it's 80 to 320. So I'd be a disadvantage, right? Or is it, how does it work when you're over? Anybody? 
Uh, I'm just looking to up the weapon. I'm not too sure. I haven't actually used a bow in this game in five. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry, guys. For some reason, my volume dropped, and I could barely hear anyone. <laughs> So, what was so that? when attacking beyond normal range, you have disadvantage on the attack roll. Yes. So I will disadvantage the shot at the thing over there. And I hit it anyway. Die, sucker! Good shot. <laughs> and, you know, the... Uh, the arrow hits the sturge uh, as it's flying around and, you know, you did a beautiful long range shot and at that the, uh, the people in the bar give out a cheer because, you know, it was such a great shot. And, and I bow and while bowing I pick up a mug of ale that's on my table and proceed to drink it. Okay. And, you, you know, Dorm, uh, he's looking around and he, uh, flags down one of the, uh, serving girls and says, uh, you know, uh, go get Fred and tell him to grab another guy and come take care of this mess here in my bar. And at that, he looks around at you all and says, I appreciate the help. Just for that, I'll give you a free round of beer, or ale, or water, whatever you're drinking. I'll take the water. And I'll head back towards the table after stacking what's left of this roll. Okay, uh, during this time, um, <clears throat> Bry, the, uh, the person that come over and gave you a healing potion uh you know he's he comes over to you and he's like uh don't think that i'm being kind to you you know this kind of thing happens quite a lot in the yawning portal and before you leave uh you need to go see Dorum about uh paying for the healing potion that i gave you Oh, he says that to uh, Bri? Yep. Fair uh, enough. Yeah, uh, Dorm's got it in place. You know, uh, uh, people that do help in incidents like this, you, you know, it, it's, his, it's his bar, and, you know, if a troll pops up, he can't be responsible for someone dying that often. So, you know, a few precautions here and there. And as you all are making your way over to the table, uh, the crowd is looking at the troll. They're looking at the dead Sturges, and they're coming over, congratulating you all, patting you on the back, telling you uh, what a great job you all did. Um, for my drink, I want the most expensive wine on the menu. And I'm checking my pockets to make sure my money's still there after all that padding. <laughs> oh, I'm streetwise. I'm, I'm definitely okay. Uh, yes, uh, you are finding all your, uh, all your money is still there, and you know people are uh, talking at you, and you know where are y'all from? What do y'all do? Yada yada yada. You're all great. Can I have your autograph? Autographs for a beer. And I'm just sitting there looking at him, nodding and with my pure white eyes, not even blink. And I and I write X on anything they give me. <laughs> and you you know, a couple of people do take you up on that beer for the autograph and uh, you you know, they're um they're a little drunk or they'd be pissed off if they just bought you a beer for an X. That's how I sign my name. And, uh... 
Briar, are you and Anna going back to the table? Oh, yeah. Uh, no problem, I'll move you. But that free drink for helping out, I want that the most expensive wine that they have. And, you know, Durham comes up, comes back over, and um, before he gets to the table, you see him bark orders to a couple of individuals, and they go over and start, uh, you know, slowly dragging the troll out of the body, uh, out of the bar, and, you know, they throw it on a tarp so blood doesn't get on the floor anymore. And, uh, Dorm comes over and he's like, uh, yeah, for your help, you know, here, uh, I'll give you a bottle of, uh, my finest wine and, you know, pictures of the finest ale that I have. Thank you, I'll just take water. It's too bad it's not champagne. I'd shake it and spray it all over it. <laughs> Just lean over to Bri and say, uh, if you need a little money to help pay for that potion, I'll throw some in at it. I might have to take it on layaway. Free drinks and overpriced potions, my favorite. <laughs> uh, I say that uh, loud so Durham can hear it. Uh, Durham looks over at Bry and goes, little fella, you, you, you had it rough, so, you know, don't worry, I'll let you have that healing potion on the house. Uh, just remember, you owe me one, though. Most kind of you. And, you know, for the next half hour or so, you are constantly uh, besieged by bar patrons. You know, they are just uh, enthralled that, yeah. you know, you all helped uh, defeat the troll. And, you know, everyone yeah. wants to be your buddy so they can say, you know, they're friends of the hero. Harry, Harry, Harry hugs all the cute women. And we all Harry men. <laughs> Harry's living it up. It's the dream. And I'll sit there quietly, sipping my water, have maybe another snack of food. Just watching the patron, see if there's anyone paying it close attention to us after all that besides uh, graduating. And Harry's flirting with any woman that comes. Uh, yes, uh, y you know, uh, you're, you're finding... Uh, Women are very responsive uh, to your advances, being the big hero that you are. And oh, well, oh, well, oh, well, he's Harry. a small hero. Harry's going home tonight. <laughs> over my images folder. God, you didn't name yourself Harry Carey. Don't spoil his moment. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> you hear... Put him on the combat tracker. That's right. I can shoot a Sturge at 300 yards with one eye shot. And um, 
<clears throat> as you know, you're sitting there uh, dealing with the throng of people around you. Uh, you see this figure. And... Oh, was I was able to recover any of my arrows? Uh, no, you weren't, but they were brought to you. <laughs> Woohoo! Uh, All of them? Yeah, it, it was a chance for uh, people to meet you. <laughs> then we are naming these arrows, arrows Troll Slayers. I'm assuming I see a couple people watching around. Just a little bit of burn marks on them from all the missing. And uh, you see this gentleman, he's uh, pushing his way through the crowd and he's like uh you'd be adventurers am i right i'd be drunk uh yes yeah you are drunk i'm sure after that great battle that you have and you know he <sighs> briefly recaps it he embellishes the battle the troll battle of the yawning portal and he's like uh, since you're all adventurers and such mighty warriors I could really use your help do you mind if I talk to you for a minute no problems here and while he's talking I'm gonna just watch him intently to see if I can figure out he's full of shit or just trying to get us. And, you know, he's he strokes his mustache and adjusts his floppy hat and he sits down beside you at the table and he goes, uh, I am Volothamp Gedrum. I'm a chronicle, wizard, and celebrity at your service. And I'm sure that you all have heard of me. I've written one or two little books in the past. Uh, would I have heard of them? I don't read. Oh, you don't read? Well, you know, reading my guide to monsters uh, would be worth learning how to read for. It's packed full of all kinds of information. And... You know, uh, uh, you're all from around here, are you? In a way. Born and raised. Ah, that's good. Uh, uh, I trust that you've noticed the violence in our fair city these past ten days. I haven't seen so much blood since my last visit to Baldur's Gate. and But now I fear that I have misplaced, misplaced a friend amongst all this odious malevolence. And the violence that he is talking about, um, the Xanathars and the Zentarum guilds are pretty much at war with one another right now. Interesting. And, you know, it, it's it, it's Chicago of the 1920s right now, you know. <laughs> a lot of drive-by shootings and <laughs> I guess that would be horse, horse-by shootings and... <laughs> open <laughs> violence and people disappearing and murders and bombings the whole nine yards but uh, you know Bolo continues and he's like yes uh, uh, I'm really concerned about my friend and my friend's name is Floon Blagmar and I'm going to put that in the chat for anyone taking notes and you know the poor lad, he's got more beauty than brains, and I worry that he took a bad way home a couple of nights ago and was kidnapped, or worse. And, you know, if you agree to track him down with all due haste, I can offer you ten dragons now, 
and I can give each of you ten times that when you find Floon. And may I prevail upon you in my hour of need. Now, gold pieces in Waterdeep are called dragons. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if you help to, if you agree to track Floon down, you know, he's going to give you 10 gold pieces, and then he'll give you, uh, you know, 10 times that when you find the guy. Cool. Is that 10 gold each, or just 10 straight up? Uh, he's going to, um, he's going to, um, uh, it's 10 gold pieces uh, 10 each, gold initially. pieces each, initially. Hmm. And would I have heard of Volos? Uh, everyone, everyone has heard has of Volo. <laughs> okay, so we know he has a very decent record, uh, a reputation at least, to a degree. Uh, yes. And, uh, would you like to make an insight check? Yes, I would. I would be watching his body language and all that to see if we're not getting screwed or left. Uh, yeah, you, you feel pretty much that he's being honest. However, you think that he might be stretching the truth about how much he can pay. Hence the reason he's come to us. We're pretty cheap. Okay. I'll lean over to the guys beside me and just uh, whisper that. But what I... You just told me, saying, eh, seems to be a little hard up, but he's a decent enough guy. I think we should at least look into it. I mean, even if we can't get the full mountain, gold's gold. Yeah, sounds good to me. Uh, I, I raise my mug while I'm drinking and, hmm. I'll say yeah. I'll say I'm in. Look at Bray. Is it Bray or Bra? That was Bray. Bray. So he says, "Great, one of you said. What about the rest?" I raised my mug and grunted. Yeah, I'll, I'll do it. I'll join. I'll join. Okay, and I don't know about Bri, but everyone else is yeah. But we'll need to get a, a decent night's rest before, you know. And I'll ask him where's the last place he's seen his friend and any clues there or so we can find a place to go look to see where the last place Okay. And uh you know, he uh throws a bag of uh gold dragons on the uh table and you know, there's forty of them. Wow, so, ten for each. Ten, ten each up front, and then a hundred when you bring Floon back to me. A hundred each. Hundred each. Wow. And I'm gonna share the quest for you all. Don't get to use that button too many times. <laughs> okay. Um. Well, I guess we're going to the Skeered Dragon. Yeah, uh, Floon, uh, 
Uh, Volvo describes Floon as a handsome human male in his uh, early 30s with wavy blonde hair. And uh, he was dressed in this princely garb the last time Volvo saw him. And um, two nights ago, before Floon disappeared, he and Volvo were uh, drinking and merrymaking at the Skewered Dragon, a dark baldy tower tavern in the dock ward and you know Volo recommends that uh, that you all start your search there okay well we'll get a nice rest on our head though okay um And, you know, uh, Dorm continues coming out and bringing you drinks and so forth. And, you know, once again, he's extremely uh, happy that you all decided to, uh, you know, help defeat the trolls while the rest of uh, his clientele cowered in fear. <laughs> and. <laughs> Uh, he's like, uh, you know, if if you all would like, I can put you up here for the night. Hi. Great. Excellent. Yeah, I was thinking there was probably the other adventurers here that would probably help fight the troll, but... <laughs> <laughs> Just think about all the experience we got. Uh, they probably went down the hole. Uh, absolutely. And, uh, if y'all don't mind, can we take ten here? Yeah, I'm good with that. All right. All right. right. See you in a minute.
I'm back. And that's no problem, Darius. Hope you feel better, brother. Yeah, I will see you guys next week. Yeah. Take your time, man. Get some rest. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, feel better. And I have no problems if you guys want to stop now so we can uh, pick up when we have all of us here tomorrow. Uh, uh, that's fine with me. Either way, I'll let you all make that call. Because, I mean, we're, we're just starting on. It'd be nice to have all of us here for the first little bit. I don't know if Sean's but I mean, Harry's back yet or not. Harry, Man, Sean. Harry, Sean. <laughs> it was so hard to hold back on so many puns, man. Uh, and I'm not even a dad. <laughs> I think I will put out a filler and see if uh, we got someone else interested. That's cool. Okay. Yeah. Um. So are we stopping for the night or? Are you back, Sean? I will give him a couple more minutes and make that decision. And. Well, while we're waiting, I'm going to, uh... And I was just watching a video on EA and Blizzard, or Blizzard and Activision are imploding on them. Oh, yeah, Blizzard, that Diablo 4. That <sighs> no, that's not even the newest problem. What now? Well, Bungie, Bungie and Blizzard and Activision separated last week, so Bungie went its own way. Oh. And now it's being investigated for security frauds. Ouch. Oh, I hadn't heard that one. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. when, with Mike Morheim leaving to replace and almost all the head people at Blizzard was keeping them out from making it into a Warcraft and all that into a real a-hole game. And being replaced with Activision people to push more money. Yeah, I quit. Uh, I quit paying attention to Blizzard about ten years ago when I stopped playing Diablo. I like Diablo too. I mean, I, mean, I never liked Diablo three. It, it, I mean, it was nothing like Diablo two, which was much better. Um, Diablo two was nothing like Diablo one. Actually, yeah. Diablo two yeah. was pretty close to Diablo one. It was just a little bit more complex, more. I never no, once, to. once they get rid of all the stupid uh, cash money stuff and all that, Diablo 3 got a lot better. Mm -hmm. I just didn't like the the gameplay. I didn't like how uh, you had to do things. In Enjoy. What are you missing? Oh, Bray went because he's pretty sick and he's been having a hard time staying from it. Bry me. I don't want to call him Bray. <laughs> or Bra. Hey, Bra. <laughs> so the uh, question put to the group, since uh, we're short one and it's uh, actually getting ready to start getting into the main plot point, uh, uh, do you, you want to postpone the rest of the rest game, until, the next game until next week? Probably yeah, gonna, yeah. Yeah. I'm good with that. It'd be nice to have all of us here when we. Uh... Yep, yep, yep. Okay, well, uh, we're off to a uh, great start. <laughs> I, I'm yeah, off to my I'm usual start. start. Yeah, I thought we did pretty good tonight. 
I think Darius. Couple of hits. Darius is hurt. just upset that he went down on uh, you know the first combat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my or our Saturday game. I'm sitting there with my ranger. My wolf got charmed. Well, not confused, so it unfortunately attacked me and hit me for 45 damage and tripped me. And I got a freaking bearded double standing where Tommy stabbed me, and I've got I'm down to 135 hit points out of 136. That's where we left off of me, one hit point from death. <laughs> and everyone else is stuck inside a chapel while I'm outside. Yeah, we got hit with a shit ton of stuff. Uh, Alright, guys. Uh, hey, have a great evening, Sean, and we'll see you uh, next Monday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 7 o'clock, right? 7 o'clock Eastern, 6 Central. <laughs> Alright, good night. Hey, y'all have a great night. Oh, I hate that Darius is sick. Yeah, he's been fighting a cold off and on for a while now. I know I've been trying to avoid my entire family because they've been giving, sharing the sickness all over. Oh, no kidding. I know it's Christmas time. Everyone was sick, but we all wanted to get together so the really sick people were staying to their own room. Didn't help me at all. I got sick as hell, so. Uh...